Hello everybody, and welcome back. Last time, we explored the entirety of the tunnel ruins, as well as both of the branching paths, and we got both of the pieces of equipment, including the Oracle Robe and Ashura's Armor. Today we're going to reach the upper section of Venus Lighthouse and explore that. So, go ahead, let's go ahead. And I would like to point out this particular piece of music. It is one of my favorites, I really like this one. It really conveys a sense of... Well, it really gets you, gets you pumped up for the final battle. So, also, every time you enter and exit this room, this synergy crystal here will respawn, making this a perfect place for grinding. So, in the uh, I may ha I may train here off, off screen. So, in a future video, I might be a few levels high. So, let's go ahead and heal up first. And let's get started. So, the first thing we want to do here is go this way. And we have more of the carry blocks. So, I'm going to go ahead and set a shortcut for the carry. There we go. Alright. So we go down here. So, similar to Mercury Lighthouse, in which we have the waterfalls with water, here we have the sand waterfall, which unfortunately do not con in this one in particular we cannot go to. And here we have some familiar enemies. So yeah, the upper section of Carlos Lighthouse has a few of the same enemies as the tunnel ruins, but it also has a few new ones, which we'll encounter soon enough. Actually, let me. Yeah. Okay. So, in this case, we want to go to the right. I want to hold the uh, the button to run. Otherwise, we'll get swept down by the sandstream and go this way. And we have a chest. And we got the thunder crown, which you may guess already just by looking at it. But if you inspect it, it replenishes synergy, which is a quite a useful ability, but it is a cursed item, unfortunately. And it also ups, yeah, it has a synergy recovery of 4, but it is cursed. However, we will be getting an item that actually nullifies curses soon enough, so I will not be equipping it yet, but it will become very useful. And we have two new enemies here. First off, we have the Chimera Mage. It is level 26, it has 413 hit points, 28 synergy, 326 attack, 119 defense, 145 agility, and 16 luck. Its elemental resistances are 100 Venus, 175 Mars, 100 Jupiter, and 25 Mercury. And it has a Venus elemental power of 95. It normally yields 362 experience points, which then become 470 if we finish him off with a Mercury gen. And it usually drops 300 coins, which then become 309. And there is also a 1 in 64 chances of then become a 1 in 16 that it will drop a spiked armor which is a piece of equipment that has a defense boost of 34, an attack boost of 10, and more important than that, it has a special e effect that ups the unleash rate by 6%. So combined with the hyper boots and the warrior's helm, that would make Isaac's unleash rate at 63%. So if we can, I'll try to get that particular item. Now, regarding its commands, he has the basic attack and there's a 12.5% chance I will use it. He has the fire blessing monster skill with a 25% chance of him using it. He has the Rabbit Fang monster skill, which is a Venus attack with an addition of 36 damage that may inflict deadly poison, has a range of 1 and a 12.5% chance of using it. The Mad Dash monster skill, which is a Venus attack with an addition of 70 points of damage, also a range of 1 and a 12.5% chance of using it. The Recovery monster skill, which restores at least 150 hit points, has a 25% chance of him using it. And finally he has the Eruption synergy, with a 12.5% chance of him using it. And our other new enemy is the Fenrir. It is level 28, it has 406 synergy, sorry, 406 hit points, no synergy at all. It has 357 attack, 125 defense, 141 agility, and 9 luck. Its elemental resistances are 100 Venus, 25 Mars, 100 Jupiter, and 175 Mercury. It has a Venus elemental power of 95, a Jupiter elemental power of 95 as well, and a Mercury elemental power of 115. It normally yields 402 experience points, which then become 522 if we finish him off with a margin. 
it drops 212 coins, which then become 275, and there is a 1 in 256 chances that then become a 1 in 64 that it will drop a Kikuiji Monji, which is a special artifact weapon that has an attack boost of 128, has an unleash called Asura, and it deals an extra 64 Jupiter damage, and it may ignore 50% of the target's defense. And there is actually an RNG method in order to get the Kikuiji Monji, which I'll go into detail at a later video. Now, as for his commands, he has the basic attack, and there's a 25% chance of him using it. He has the Ice Blessing, which is a Mercury attack with a power rating of 180, a range of 3, and there's a 25% chance of him using it. He has the Double Fang Monster Skill with a 25% chance, and the Wicked Howl Monster Skill as well, with also a 25% chance of him using it. And also I'd like to point out that the Chimera Mage can also be found throughout the Tunnel Ruins, we just managed to avoid him. So yeah, these are... We're we are nearing the end of the game and these enemies are about the strongest as we can expect. And they are quite tough, but they also drop very good items. So yeah, as you saw, they basically completely survive a round of attacks and they deal a decent amount of damage but let's see if we can actually finish them off hopefully if we can get any... yeah, they look quite weak there and let's see here All right. so once again we have the sand water of falls here and we can actually go through this one And here we have actually a new enemy, as well as a familiar enemy with the Willow Wisp. Here we have a Recluse. He is level 27, he has 221 hit points, no synergy, 323 attack, 122 defense, 109 agility, and 4 luck. Its elemental resistances are 48 Venus, 25 Mars, 48 Jupiter, and 48 Mercury, and it has a Venus elemental power of 95. It normally yields 243 experience points, which then become 315 if we finish him off with a margin. It drops 164 coins, which then become 198. And there's a 1 in 64 chances that then become a 1 in 16 that it will drop an Unicorn Ring, which is an item that can be used to heal poison or deadly poison. Now, regarding his commands, he has the basic attack and there's a 37.5% chance of using it. He has a, the Rabbit Fang Monster Kill with a 37.5% chance of him using it, and the Spider Web with a 25% chance of him using it. So yeah, we have a bunch of enemies. Luckily, they're not particularly threatening compared to the other enemies we faced before. So we should be fine. And there we go. Alright, let's continue down this way. And here we have what is the more common puzzle throughout the upper section of Phoenix Cycles. This is a pretty easy example, we just have to line up the floor so that the light coming from the statue reaches the end. And we flip the switch here. We create a sand stream in the different in a different direction. All right. Again, the we have the Chimera Mage and the Fenry, so let's deal with them as quickly as possible. That is quite a lot of damage. Alright, so Isaac is about to die. Let's see if we can either finish him off as quickly as possible or 
Yeah, I'll try to kill them and then we'll heal outside of battle. There we go. Hopefully this will kill the Chimera Mage. Yeah. So, I think I'm going to switch back to the party starting classes and since I already gave the their trial elemental classes a decent trial, so I think I'll be switching in the further episodes. So, and here we have a new enemy here. We have the Thunder Lizard. It is level 28, it has 456 hit points, no synergy. 347 attack, 133 defense, 134 agility, and 10 luck. Its elemental resistance is up. 25 Venus, 100 Mars, 193 Jupiter, and 100 Mercury. And it has a Jupiter elemental power of 120. It normally gives 422 experience points, which then become 548 if we finish him off with a Venus gene. It drops 221 coins, which then become 287. And there is a 1 in 128 chances, if they become a 1 in 32, that it will drop a Bless Maze. Which is a weapon, in this case it is not an artifact weapon because it does not have an unleash. It has an attack boost of 126 and it provides a, a passive a HP recovery of 2. And it can be used from your inventory to restore 200 hit points to one ally. And there is actually an RNG method to get the Blessed Maze. Other than that, its commands are the basic attack and there's a 62.5% chance of him using it and he has a new monster skill called Storm Blessing, which is a Jupiter attack with a power rating of 190 and it may inflict stun. has a range of 3 and there's a 37.5% chance of him using it. So even though it's he's alone, the Storm Blessing monster skill is actually quite deadly, so it's quite a dangerous move. Hopefully you can take care of him before he even attacks. And that's okay. He just used a ray light, so we should be fine. Alright, so if we go through here basically we can see the chest where we got the what was it that we got? The Thunder Crown. Yeah. So we're gonna go this way now. And let's let's go ahead and just move. and push this all the way to the left. Alright, let's continue. And we have a Willow Wisp and two Refuse, so nothing too scary, luckily. And get a level up, nice. Alright, let's go up the stairs. And here we have a slightly more complex but still pretty easy puzzle. And in this case, as you can see, there are two paths that come out of the goddess statue. In this case, you don't have to worry, you only have, you only have to make sure that one of the lights reaches the end. So, we're going to push this here. And this one all the way to the left. And we're done with that. Alright. And once again we have to deal with the falling sand. So first let's go this way. And we have a few sand waterfalls here. And we have a chest. I saw gave some dragon scales to get it. So we got the dragon scale. This is quite a nifty piece of equipment. It resists water and fire. And if we get even more details, it provides a first it provides a 44 def defense and a plus 30 to your Venus, to your Mercury and your Mars resistance. So it's quite a useful item. And I think I'm going to give that to Gareth here. And I was going to say let's proceed, but first let's take care of the Chimera Mage here. Ah. 
What a shame. If he had been the triple damage, we may have been able to take care of it in one round. But it's still pretty lucky to get two, three unleashes out of four. Alright, so let's go over this way. And we have once again one of those passes where we have to balance weight by using the carry stones here. One more should do. Alright. Now, before we proceed down here, let's go ahead and clear up the shortcut here. And let's activate another of those switches. All right. And now let's go down. And here we have a new enemy. This is the Grand Golem. It is level 28, it has 476 hit points, no synergy at all, 367 attack, 149 defense, 80 agility and 5 luck. Its elemental resistances are 193 Venus, 100 Mars, 25 Jupiter and 100 Mercury. And it has a Venus elemental power of 120. It normally yields 412 experience points which then become 535 if we finish it off with a Jupiter Gene. It drops 208 coins, which then become 270, and there is a 1 in 128 chances that then become a 1 in 32 that it will drop a Zodiac one, which is a special artifact weapon that has an unleash called Shining Star. It, the, the irregular it has an attack boost of 110, but the Shining Star unleash provides an extra damage, extra 57 Jupiter damage, and it may inflict the target with Delusion. Now, as for his commands, he has the basic attack and there's a 62.5% chance of him using it. And he has the Truncheon Fist, which is a very same monster skill as the Earth Golem had. So, let's go ahead and take care of these ones. It's all on his own, so it should be fine with just a round of regular attacks. And there we have it. Let's actually heal up before we proceed. And let's go this way. Ah, so here we basically have to use the run button to make sure that we get caught in the right direction. And here we have a chest containing a very special item. I should gave a Gaia Blade to Ivan. So, let's actually check that item. Longsword unleashes Titan Blade, and if we if we inspect it, it, it has an attack boost of plus 135. It has a plus to Venus power of 20, as well as Venus resistance. So, and it also has an unleash called Titan Blade, which deals an extra 70 Venus damage. The Gaia Blade is what we can call describe it at, as Isaac's an ultimate weapon. So it's, it is the very best weapon that we can get for him in this game. So of course I'm going to equip it to you. Alright, so the only one that's actually missing a better weapon at this point is Gareth, but he will get his soon enough. So let's see here. Alright, so here we have an even longer version of the similar puzzles that we've done before. So, in this case, since it may take a bit too much time, I'm going to cut to when I'm done. So I'll see you guys in a moment. Alright, and with that I have completed this circuit here, as you can see. And there we go. So, we have our final switch to press here.
and even more enemies. So, let's see here. I may actually use Garrett's turn to heal just in case because the Chimera Mage and the Thunder Lizard can be quite deadly if they use their best moves. And they are quite quite sturdy to some of the synergies that we have. They're not taking that, that much damage. Oh, so. so, if we are lucky with the Unleashes, we might be able to finish this in this round. Alright, we have the Titan Blade Unleash. 238 damage. That is amazing. And we got the Broil, which is not bad, but the Burning Axe is falling behind in regards to weapons. But we'll fix that soon enough. And we got yet a second Titan Blade, nice. Alright. And here you can see one of the floating uh, platforms that we saw at the very top of Mercury Lighthouse. So this is basically a hint that we are very close to the top. But before that, let's get rid of the Fenrir as quickly as possible. Come on. Alright, pretty good. Let's go. Alright, so. Let's go up here. get interrupted once more by quite a terrifying group of enemies actually hmm hmm we have any just in case I'll use granite and everybody else can attack Jesus, what an obsession with me uh, that was. Alright, let's see here. Hmm. Hmm. Can I use any of these? Let's get back granite, I guess, and let's continue attacking with everybody else. Alright, one Chimera Mage down. Or rather two. Alright. So, regular attacks should be more than enough here. Man, we are getting really lucky. Then again, Isaac does have, I believe, a 57% chance of using his Unleash, thanks to the items that I have equipped on him. So, we have a large room with, again, another symbol of Venus, and we have a Synergy Crystal and a spot to drop down. Right below us is that platform that will take us up to the Eerie of Venus Lighthouse. Once you go down, that begins the sequence towards the final battle. So, at this point our party is at a decent level. If we wanted to, we could go ahead and begin the final battle and I do think that we will come out victorious. However, there are a few things that we have yet to do. For example, we're still missing one Venus Gene. And there's also the matter of a few of the RNG methods that I have promised to showcase. So, next time I'm going to showcase as many of those as I can and we'll, make, we'll start making our way back to Crossbone Isle where we will be able to fully explore it finally. I might do some leveling up in the, in the meantime just to let you know. So, until then, see you guys.